Namaste. As Robert Louis Stevenson put it, I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. And what can be the use of him is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head. And I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. The funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow. Not at all like proper children, which is always very slow. For he sometimes shoots up taller like an Indian rubber ball. And he sometimes gets so little that's none of him at all. Our shadows never leave us, but deeply anchored at our heels, they stretch and shrink not only throughout the day, but also over the year. During a day close to 12 noon, it is the shortest and hovers near our feet, sharp and short. But morning and evening, it stretches soft and long, so much so that reaches a place either ahead of us or trails like a lazy self. But watch out! Even at the sharpest noon, it's never zero length, barring two days of the year. Today, April 18th, is the zero shadow day at Corricord. The time is 11.30 a.m. And we look at the shadow of a vertical object now. You can see that the angle of shadow and length of it. Actually, we have measured the shadow at different time of the day, starting from 9 o'clock and making points at every hour. And we can see how the length varies with time. On any other time than the noon, 12, 10 to 6 p.m., even this day, if we hold this board horizontally, we will get a blurred image. But right at 12.26 pm, the image gets sharp and crispy. It is only time when a hollow cylinder will exactly cast a circular illumination through it. Let us get to the field where the action is heating up. Here I stand with the arms stretched. We are approaching the time zero, that is the exact midday today, where the sun comes right overhead at our latitude. See, my shadow has vanished. Only when I jump, it is seen below my legs. The condition prevails only two minutes, so we need to hurry up for another experiment. We had seen the setup earlier. It did not show any light at the bottom as the sun rays were incident on the cylinder's mouth at an angle. But now we have a nice sharp circular light patch here. It vindicates that the sun at this moment is right overhead. Our vertical gloomon now shows how over the day's time the shadow has rotated and shrunk to produce the zero shadow. Ready? It's a celestial sphere, uh, the abstract model through which actually astronomers uh, studies the motion of objects in the sky. And uh, this is the horizon, observer's horizon actually where uh, the sky, this is supposed to be the abstract sky where it uh, intersects the uh, horizontal plane. This is the horizon. The apparent path of the sun is here. This is the ecliptic. This is the extended plane of the Earth's equator. So this is the celestial equator. This is the apparent path, ecliptic. Uh, in the sense that as Earth moves in its orbit, uh, the projected image of the sun uh, against the background uh, describes a great circle in the sky and that is called the ecliptic. Now, on this particular thing, as we have seen that zero shadow day to occur, what happens is that the latitude of the place, which is equal to the altitude of the pole star from that location. So, Calicut is located at 11.15 degree north. So, we keep this. This can be changed to any place. So, we position it at 11.15 degree north 
and we position the sun. This is supposed to be sun which is moving on, on the ecliptic. So this is the ecliptic. So we position the sun on April 18th. So what happens here, this is the declination, the um, angular separation from the uh, equator to the ecliptic. This shows the declination of the sun as on today, that is on 18th April. This matches with this and at that point actually the sun is literally overhead. So any object here casts a shadow directly below it. So this model gives a very schematic picture of what is the geometry of the sun, earth and its shadow as which explains the full phenomenon. If you are observant, simple observations can lead to profound conclusions. Using the tools of logic and rational imagination, subject to laws of science, we can explain why the things are the way they are. Stay tuned with us for many more stories on science. Welcome to the online channel of Regional Science Center and Planetarium Canicut. Your own window to the world of science.